Hello, everyone. Thank you for um, coming to this panel. It's, uh, it's the uh, end of the session. We are aware of that. So, so thank you for, for coming, and thank you to our panelists. Um, I, I had the opportunity to run a similar session here at Speech Tech, but that was two years ago on the same topic. Um, and I, I was interested in, in running this panel discussion once again this year because so, so many things have changed in, in those two years since I had that, uh, that session. Um, so I, I'd like to start off and, and um, if you allow me to do just a quick um, show of slides before I proceed to introduce our panelists. Uh, and I, I put these slides together just to place the uh, the conversation in context and share with you a little bit of, of what I've done uh, at 451 Research. I'm, a, I'm an analyst there, and speech technologies is, is one of the topics that I, that I cover. And uh, my um, coverage focuses strongly on workforce productivity. So that's basically how um, this panel discussion was uh, thought of. Now, um, uh, I, will, I will start off with that introduction, then I will um, introduce our panelists. Um, I'll try to go through the slides quickly, but they will be available for you um, to download from the Speech Tech website. And what I'll do is, as we progress during the conversation, um, I'd like to welcome your questions, so just raise your hand if, if, you, if you'd like, and I'll, I'll signal to you when, when we can start taking questions, uh, probably towards... Um, uh, 20, 15 minutes or so before we, we end the session. So let's just get started with some, with some uh, data points to place, uh, to give some context, some color to our discussion. Um, so one of the things that I do at 451 Research, uh, we do a lot of uh, surveys to find out what uh, IT decision makers think about technology adoption. And what you see on the slide is uh, basically um, We've been monitoring what their approach to speech technologies in the enterprise is. What I can tell you right now, you can see that uh, speech technologies is right up there uh, among the three top places um, in terms of what uh, early adopters are thinking. This is from our digital transformation survey. So we basically ask them in terms of your digital transformation initiatives, what are the technologies that are looking at? What are the technologies that you think will have a, a substantial impact in, in, uh, in your initiatives. Uh, two years ago, um, speech technology <laughs> did not figure in that, in that uh, picture, but you can see right now that it's um, one of the, of, of the top three, and uh, right next to IoT and, and AI and machine learning, which is quite interesting. Um, one thing that I've covered in my research, um, if you look at how speech technologies has evolved uh, from the consumer segment and then compared to, to the uh, enterprise, um, there's a wide adoption in the consumer. A lot of that has to do with adoption of uh, devices. So we all like uh, our Google Home and we love getting our weather report from, from Alexa in the morning and so on. That's not the case for the enterprise. And, and uh, we initially thought that it could not be um, uh, quite that dissonant, given that those devices are also available for, for the enterprise. Um, the, the laptops that we use and, and smartphones that, that we may use for work and also for personal use, they all have um, speech recognition capabilities and, and they have Siri and Alexa and so on. Uh, but we have noticed a dissonance uh, and a lag in terms of uh, adoption in the enterprise. Uh, one exception, though, is in some very narrowly defined use cases um, that are dependent on technologies that are uh, speech-driven. So you may see some use cases in manufacturing, for example, with uh, smart glasses. Um, and, and uh, there's also, um, this year at Enterprise Connect in particular, I, I noticed many of the new desk phones and meeting room equipment, um, they, they have uh, speech-enabled uh, capabilities. Um, so there, there is a certain influence in terms of the devices. However, as you know, these, uh, some of these devices are, are quite expensive. The other device that I put in this category are the uh, digital whiteboards. Um, 
like uh, Cisco's and, and Google, and, and they're also speech enabled, but they're quite expensive. So that means it's not something that you will see um, widely adopted in the enterprise. So that's one of the questions that, I, um, that I'm going to ask our panelists to, to talk about. And to get into the introduction of who is with us in the, in the panel, uh, the way I set this up, these are some of the companies that I talk to regularly about these topics. And um, I uh, purposely selected companies that could represent the range of use cases and worker types. So you will see, for example, uh, Aprente, who um, targets uh, service workers. Uh, and then there's uh, Ring Central and, and Boisea, who primarily, uh, and I should say not exclusively, but primarily target knowledge workers. And then we have Orion Labs, who also primarily, or a lot of the use cases that target are task workers. So um, that is one of the observations that I have in terms of how the panel was set up, that uh, um, the use cases that we are seeing for speech technologies in the enterprise are very much driven by the use case, by the type of worker, and the workflow requirements. So within that, in some cases, the device might be relevant, um, as in the case of Orion. So with this in mind, and, and like I said, the slides will be available for you, or, or if not after the session, please uh, uh, feel free to, to contact me, and I'll be glad to, to give you my contact information. But I'd like to um, introduce uh, our panel now, and the way I'm going to do this <clears throat> for the sake of time, because I'd like to get to the, to the discussion, is I could like each of them to give us just a very quick overview um, who you are uh, and, and uh, <clears throat> your company and why, uh, why, uh, what do you have to do with speech applications. So can we start with uh, Itamar, please? Yeah, thank you so much. Glad to be here. Itamar Arel, I'm CEO of a company called Apprente, which is in the Bay Area. I guess we have over-representation of the Bay Area here, here but um, we too are in the area. Uh, we build what we call voice-based uh, intelligent conversational agents for the restaurant space, in particular the quick service restaurant space, and even more specifically, automating the drive-through ordering process at chains like Starbucks and McDonald's and Burger King. And I'm Corey Trapletti. I'm the CMO for Voicea. We created an in-meeting virtual assistant that helps you by taking notes and organizing all the follow-up so that you don't have to worry about what was said or who said what or what was supposed to be done because you've got this backstop of a recording, a transcript, and an AI organized set of notes that can be then pushed into any collaboration workflow system that you already use. I'm Ellen Jolin, head of product at Orion Labs. Uh, we build a voice platform and uh, connected voice wearables uh, to give to, uh, uh, as, uh, as you said, uh, no, uh, task workers and service workers uh, to com communicate amongst themselves and also to automate uh, workflows, uh, translation, um, and things to help the teams work together. Hi, I'm Amrit. Uh, <clears throat> I run uh, a lot of the outbound go-to-market functions for, for Ring Central. We're one of the, the leading cloud vendors when it comes to enterprise PBX. Uh, the whole UC suite, so call message meeting for, for the employee productivity suite, but we also have a full stack solution on the customer engagement contact center side with, with digital assistants, digital agents, as well as um, the, the full stack contact center. Thank you everyone and welcome to the, to the panel. So um, the first question that I'd like to um, uh, kick off uh, the discussion with is related to the current status. Um, and um, and um, I'd like to open the questions to all the participants, but uh, um, I will be uh, selecting some of you because I'm very curious about specifically what your opinion is on this. So Corey. Um, in terms of the current status of uh, adoption, uh, what has been your experience? What do you see in terms of what enterprises are looking for and are they uh, open to speech applications, productivity applications? Yeah, so it's been interesting because we launched the commercial version of our product just a year ago. And last year when we were going out, uh, we had been in open beta for about six months prior to that. And then we started charging and we started going out to go to market. And at the at the initial point of release, a lot of people ask the questions, what is it that you do? How does this work? Um, is it gonna be recording and transcribing everything in my meetings, so on and so forth? And they weren't, it was more of a social comfort set of questions that they were asking. These days, it literally in one year, it's been quickly uh, changed where they're no longer asking the social comfort questions. Everyone has actually become very 
comfortable with the idea of having an AI in the room that is recording, transcribing, and, and taking notes for you. But what they're asking now is around privacy, security, compliance, much more enterprise-oriented types of questions. And that's been interesting because we started out with this very much prosumer model where we go after individuals, and then as we start to get critical mass through virality in an organization, we'll upsell the enterprise. But now we have inbound enterprises asking us, I want to get X number of seat licenses, I'd like to find out how to use this inside my company. And this is a real quick change. It seems like in one year, the, the business environment became much more comfortable and understanding and accepting and interested and intrigued mm -hmm. in the type of technology. We don't have to go pitch it to them as much as they're coming and asking us questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'd like to ask the same uh, question, but with a twist to, to Ellen, because um, it, it, Orion Labs started out uh, with a concept targeting uh, very specific use cases and workers, and the company has been around for, for a few years, but what do you think has changed in terms of uh, openness and, and attitude towards speech applications with your clients? Uh, yeah, so when uh, Orion first started uh, five years ago, um, Voice was still a relatively new thing, and um, you know, kind of generally, uh, it was slightly before Siri and Alexa really took off. And so, at the time, everyone was like, "No one does voice anymore. It's just you know, phone. You know, who does that?" And then, you know, two years later, it was like, "Voice! Oh my God, everything's voice!" Um, and so, we've been seeing a lot of uh, enterprise companies really see the value in connecting their automated services to their workers on the ground in a really um, simple interface of just a push to talk. Uh, thing with it. They don't have to get them a cell phone or complicated apps or things. They just you know push and talk and get access to you know safety checks or um, information retrieval that they need for their job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then, um, uh, Amri, you um, uh, you have a, a similar I think experience. What do you see in terms of of boys? He was just sharing with me. Um, or he was asking me what my opinion was in, in terms of how voice is evolving. There's a big debate, like Ellen just said, whether is voice out, are people still using voice? What has been your experience? So I think, you know, it's, it, it's gone through a full cycle, right? So uh, I agree with some of the comments with, with Corey made and, 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 and even Ellen, which you shared. Like five years ago, I think, uh, you know, the pe people poo pooed all over the place about voice use cases, right? Um, then voice became very, very important and critical, uh, and and all, and then all of a sudden now it's uh, you know video is the new voice. Uh, but there are certain use cases uh, where, uh, for example, video is, is never appropriate. I mean, c consider the amount of meetings you join with your uh, with your camera <laughs> disabled, right? Uh, and all of us do that. Um, but some of these core voice use cases, along with AI, which has gone through a similar journey, AI about a year. A year ago, I think, stood for artificially inflated, uh, <laughs> and, and now it's it, the real use cases are coming out where whether you're extracting intent from voice calls uh, for either productivity, performance coaching, sales coaching, uh, you know, for the, putting the right offer in front of your customers, all of these things are evolving. And so, from our perspective, because what voice is such a cornerstone of our of our capabilities, mm -hmm. which we take to market, we take some of that seriously, and we are continuously seeing these new use cases uh, across all of these these verticals, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which we are come, which we are looking at across vertical industries as well as, as horizontal industries. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, what one, um, as I mentioned to you, one of the reasons uh, each of the panelists was was invited was because of the rather unique, I think, and interesting nature of the use cases they address. So I could like to ask all of you to share just a little bit with, uh, um, with, the, with the audience, what are the use cases that you are addressing and how voice uh, plays a role in terms of the specific uh, na uh, nature of the work. And I could like to ask uh, Itamar to, to, to start off and if you can also share a little bit about the uniqueness of your technology for the use cases you address. So first, I, I couldn't agree more. I would echo everything that's been said. Last two, three years, certainly, yeah, even less than two years have been dramatic. The restaurant space is very different than maybe other industries, but the consensus now, consensus now is that voice is going to play a key role across multiple channels. Tying into the second part of your question, obviously, to just give you stat, interesting stats we weren't aware of before we enter the space. So, um, quick service restaurant uh, space or industry in the U.S. 350 billion. 70% of that comes from the drive-through. So all these chains we know and love are essentially drive-through chains and 
Um, the notion of fully automating that conversation, creating an engaging, flowing, um, you know, connecting conversation was, I would assume, was science fiction two, three years, let alone five years ago, right? And now everyone's fairly convinced that the pieces of the puzzle on the technology side are there to drive real solutions. Um, so other than drive through mobile apps, we're hearing from both retail and restaurant players, uh, you know, wouldn't it be nice if you can press a button and <clears throat> say, welcome to Starbucks or to Smart Burger or whatever it is, what can I get for you? And you have this conversation, particularly as you're driving, for example, or you shouldn't be flipping through your phone, um, and just really pick up, of course, on a million different ways people have of communicating their broken language, mm -hmm. all these challenges, and creating uh, a, new, a new set of solutions that, again, just a few simple, you know, two, three years ago would have been considered science fiction. So I think um, in our, what we're seeing, which again, slightly different spaces, Again, echoing the, the sentiment here, voice is going to play a key role. It's going to be everywhere, self-serve kiosks, mobile, drive-through. Um, I think that's, that's, the, that's the consensus for the next few years. Thank you. Yeah. Corey. So we, in that year that we've had uh, our product commercially available, we've seen use in about five or 6,000 different companies in the U.S. And what we've seen is there's three primary use cases that have bubbled up. One is that you don't have to do a whole lot. The, the AI is there. It's kind of, I got your back. Whereas that if there's something you may have forgotten or if you were able to make a meeting in general, you can go back to the, the recap and the summary and you can gather the basic insights that you need. Um, then there's the little one where you put a little bit more input into it, so you're using voice commands kind of like an Alexa in your meeting, and you end up with much faster follow-up because the things that you want to have happen in your meeting are already taking place. You're already pushing things into different systems. You're already sending follow-up emails. You're already doing that from in the meeting. So that's the second use case. And then the third case that we've seen is for the people who put a little bit more input into the system where they can go and they can curate and edit all the notes that the AI captures after the fact and you end up with a very highly curated, highly detailed set of actions that if you're a project manager or um, something along those lines where you're orchestrating an entire team of follow-up, what happens is you reduce the swirl in the post-meeting follow-up because everybody has exactly the right information and they have this source of truth which is the meeting itself. So the idea that a meeting is no longer a temporal moment in time, it's actually a piece of content that the, that the corporation can use going forward. So those are the three use cases that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. And it, funny enough, it's only really started to crystallize in the last yeah. three or four months. Um, if you asked me three months ago what the use cases were, <laughs> I'd have a different answer. But we've seen, after having now done a couple different customer surveys, mm -hmm. and we're doing uh, customer interviews on a daily basis now, at least one or two a day, and we're getting this information being spit back to us. This is how they're using it. So once again, it kind of speaks to that social comfort where now they understand the value, so therefore the mutual benefit and the reciprocal value is, is much, much clearer. Thank you. Hey, yeah, um, uh, you know, the basic use case for us is just as a simple walkie-talkie replacement for uh, teams to mm -hmm. communicate. Um, and then we add additional layers like translation. So now different parts of your workforce can talk to each other. People who speak Spanish can speak to those who speak English and so forth. So you have more cohesion amongst your workforce. Uh, and then on top of that, we have uh, information retrieval. Uh, so how many of this shirt and this size do we have in stock? And you can do all this without leaving your, you know, the customer that you're working with mm -hmm. um, and querying these things um, in parallel. So you don't have to wait for a, a human to look up a thing and respond to you. Um, and then there's a compliance and, um, and consistency of uh, running a safety check instead of just you know, checking up boxes on a piece of paper that gets thrown away. Um, you make sure that people are doing the safety check correctly. You get an emailed summary to the managers. They can see where issues are across the board. Um, and all this is just uh, with a really simple interface for the person on the ground who doesn't, might not know how to use a smartphone, but can you know, press the button and say a thing and respond to, uh, to a voice asking them questions. So we have some similar use cases. So the, this, uh, I, I would say, if, uh, I would categorize them uh, as kind of in, in two broad categories. One is what we are starting to call the like the table stakes set of use cases, which is um, you know a, for a user to start off a meeting, a call um, mm -hmm. uh, through Alexa or a Siri, etc. So th these are very basic. Hey, go into a meeting room and just go start. Uh, a voice, uh, you know, a meeting or, or a call, etc., or even a, a team messaging exercise through just voice, uh, voice commands, and, uh, and and some of them are just kicking off the application. Some of them are authentication and authorization use cases, where you know you're you're going into a meeting room and it's authenticating and authorizing that you you're allowed to use equipment, etc. So, so that's mm -hmm. kind of table stakes. But then we're starting to see interesting use cases in the customer engagement contact center world, where you know, if you're an agent on, on the phone with a customer and you need some help with, uh, with, with a specific aspect, 
the ability for you to create a team messaging group on the fly using voice commands saying, hey, can you create a team messaging group? Uh, and I want to ask the expert about this specific question using voice while you're helping the customer uh, is, is pretty powerful. And for it to kind of come back in that team messaging mode where I'm actually talking to customers and then I'm kind of get, getting help on the side, right? Uh, so those kind of use cases are what I call the more advanced use cases. Mm. These are these require m m much more integration, integration with bots and mm. other systems as yeah. well. Uh, and and we are, I feel like I believe that we are scratching the surface on that. Yeah. On that. But we there's there's a lot of good things happening. Here. Yeah. Thank you for making that point. And one thing that I'd like to share with the audience is that I I had a separate conversations with with each of the panelists to prepare for this session. Uh, and it's it's just easier than trying to have everyone at the same time in a phone call. Uh, but I, I found that as I was talking to each of them separately, uh, there were some topics that kind of started surfacing, and, and I, I think uh, they were just uh, made, so I would just uh, highlight. Um, there, there, we're seeing a transition in terms of how these applications, the role they play in the enterprise, going from uh, the convenience factor, which is, as, as you just described, um, I think very well, the convenience of just articulating a command so that the meeting starts, or, or, or in, the, in, in the way Itamar described the workflow, uh, it, it's convenient to, to have a, a voice-enabled application that will take my order. Uh, but but uh, I'm seeing that in the examples, the use cases that all of you are, are sharing with us, there is uh, an impact in terms of productivity uh, and, and uh, what we could call agile execution, uh, which allows for less errors, um, more uh, <coughs> improved workflows. Um, and, and in many cases, some of you are making, or I think all of you made references to the real-time component of the execution. Uh, so all of those are, are um, the topics that keep com coming up for digital transformation. So, so thank you for, for sharing that. So we, we've talked a, a little bit about the, um, the benefits. Uh, I could like to know if some of you have um, similarly uh, experiences that, that you can share with the audience in terms of the challenges. Um, so I think at, uh, early in the conversation, I, I think Corey mentioned the privacy issues and so on, but um, are those issues, are there cultural issues, are there technical issues that uh, the audience uh, could like to know about? Yeah. I can go. So, so, so like I said, we're, we're scratching the surface and, 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 and some of these issues are different by region. So, for example, uh, you know, specific regions in, in EMEA for us are in, in, in Europe, mm -hmm. Uh, where certain compliance and regulations are, are, are more stringent, uh, you you have to follow certain rules uh, about what you're collecting, how you're, if you're doing uh, voice-related commands you know, and based on transcription, how you're doing that, where does the data live, are you going through GDPR, all of those pieces yeah. need to be figured out. So, uh, so, so I think there are, you know, certain areas where uh, some of these policing, policies are dictating architecturally how we take these things to market. Um, and, 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 and then the second part of it is integrations with other systems because the more integrations you have, the better connected ecosystem you play in, the better the value we all provide. I mean, across this entire portfolio, I mean, of all the folks here, if all of us are plugged in, uh, <laughs> in, in into the, the, the applications which we kind of uh, serve, uh, the, our, the end user experience is that much better, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so, Though, even though we, we, we like to say that you know, some of these systems don't exist in silos, they, they, they do, and integration is, 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 to these systems is a challenge uh, because of lack of open APIs, you know, how you get access to some of these systems. If you're dealing with an on-prem system, you know, how is you're going back and forth with data. So, so some of these, uh, like I would say security, compliance, governance, and then the regional mm -hmm. specific pieces are the pieces which are inhibitors in today. I mean, they're going away. I mean, we are all actively working towards figuring out a solution, but these are the current mm -hmm. obstacles. Okay, thank you. I just want to do a quick time check because some of our panelists will have to run to the airport. So <laughs> if there are any questions, please uh, raise your hands and motion and I'll make sure that we get to them, but uh, please go ahead. Yeah. 
Um, um, the challenges that we've seen is, uh, you know, a, uh, a speech to text is still um, what I call Starbucks style of name recognition. Uh, so I'm Alan everywhere <laughs> that I say that to a computer um, and at Starbucks. Um, and when we're working in an environment that is, you know, person to person, like, hey, Bob, can you go get another ladder for us? Uh, you know, Bob's pretty easy, but Nivedita is a harder one. Um, so there's a, you know, in, in areas where we're trying to like convert names to commands or have a computer act for a sp specific person, uh, you know, that's one of the areas that still needs to catch up a little bit. Um, and uh, uh, just dealing with uh, people who don't, uh, uh, aren't as familiar with smartphones and using smartphones. You know, we're working with uh, task workers, smartphones are scary and make them feel, um, you know, dumb. And so asking them to know about Bluetooth or apps uh, makes them you know feel challenged. So you know, creating a specific device uh, you know smooths that over a little bit. But it's still um, you know, anytime that you bring up an app, you have to be conscious of which workers you're asking to use that. Yeah. So I agree with all that, but I'll I'll give you a different spin, which is its expectations. Hmm. Um, two things that that comes to mind with. So the first one is that when we first launched the product, and we talked about the AI transcribing a conversation and recognizing intent, extracting information. People's expectations are that they should be able to walk out and everything is going to be absolutely perfect. <laughs> and that's not possible because audio quality and so many other things have an impact on whether or not the machine can even hear what it's trying to transcribe and it can identify the right kinds of impact, intent. So that's one thing. The second thing is that there's also this expectation that when people see what they said in writing, that they're like, mm. and we use this analogy, that they're like Martin Luther King and how great they spoke and how eloquent <laughs> they were. No one speaks like that. So what happens is a lot of time you'll look at a transcript for a conversation and you'll look at it and say, this is crap, this is horrible. Then you'll go listen to the audio and it's verbatim, 100% exactly what was said <laughs> with five people talking over each other, interrupting each other and saying, um, you know, uh, yeah, like a lot. And so what happens is that people, that what they hear, what they expect are, are misaligned. You had to take that and also put that into effect with when we first launched, our expectation was that People understand Alexa, they will use voice commands in a meeting. And then we found, wow, to interrupt the flow of a conversation to use voice mm -hmm. commands is really awkward, so let's swing the pendulum the entire other way, have the AI do all the intent recognition. And there was too many false positives and too many things that was capturing that aren't really as important. So we ended up shifting back into the middle mm -hmm. where it's a combination of explicit and implicit commands that are being given in a conversation. And this is all stuff that we're doing on the fly because while we're trying to build this, you know, people are getting more comfortable with an Alexa device. People are getting more comfortable with how they speak. We've seen some interesting mm -hmm. things, okay. which uh, just last week I heard feedback from a user where having the AI in their meetings makes them slow down, makes them think about what they're going to say before they say it, and makes them be much more uh, cohesive in their speech, which is something we hypothesized would happen, but to have someone tell us unsolicited that this is what's happening was interesting. Thank you. So I'll offer even a, a third spin on that. So it's interesting because in retail and restaurant and real world, um, you know, I agree. I think what Siri Alexa did more than anything is train, in some ways, train people to speak more clearly to it and to, mm -hmm. um, yeah, along with improving the product, of course. And in our world, that's not a luxury that we can assume. I mean, people are not going to talk differently at the drive-through or, or you know, the, the, at a store uh, than the way they have been for 40 years, right? So. Uh, it makes it more challenging to be robust to the variations in language, really pick up on the million different ways they have of asking for a product or about a product. The observation we made is, it, in contrast to Siri Alexa, the, uh, you know, the consumer-facing products, they're there to address a very open-ended use case. It should be able to ask a, one of 8,000 different things from Siri, right? From the weather in San Francisco tomorrow through information off the web, booking restaurant. In, on the enterprise side, it tends to be the case that you're in a restricted domain, right? So that's a bit of, a, of something that should be used ideally, right? The fact that people at drive-thrus tend to ask about food items and related, not about the weather tomorrow somewhere, right? So, um, you know, we, we, the, the approach uh, we've taken, there's other approaches, is to build a conversation simulator that can augment real data that you have, which is always less than you would like, with many, many synthetic examples of plausible things people could be saying at the drive-thru at a retail, and use all that data, the real and the synthetic or the augmented, to train your models and really be robust to various ways in which people can communicate and train people less and have the system be more robust. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I think we're at the time mark. Uh, so uh, this, this uh, feels like it went by too fast. So please give me a two second uh, key takeaway for, for the audience. Uh, Itamar, do you want to start? 
take away what's sorry so like just a, uh, your your take away your yeah um, you know I, I think we it's obviously here it's kind of preaching to the choir we live in a very exciting time where not only the technology is there but the marketplace is ready for these kind of solutions ready to take a chance on things that they probably wouldn't have been two three years ago and I think across different industries it's exciting to be there because um, there's all this innovation and readiness in the market space that we're certainly experiencing and it sounds like everybody else did so yeah I don't have a whole lot other than just designing and developing these technologies we're finding that um, there's such a rapid rate of iteration on mm -hmm. them that whatever you found and discovered six months ago might be old news by the time mm -hmm. you get to it so what we've been doing is trying to create a, a, a culture internally where we have a lot more sharing about mm -hmm. what we're learning on a weekly basis and try to quickly work that back into the system because that's what we're seeing is having a massive effect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, now with uh, connected devices, uh, we really have kind of last meter delivery of the whole industrial automation and, uh, you know, task management that we can deliver to the workers on the ground. Um, and so we can enable a much larger workforce uh, without requiring as many humans in the middle to manage them uh, mm -hmm. manually. So that's uh, really enabled a lot of the people that we're working with today. Thank you. So my quick takeaway, we have an open bar. <laughs> 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 uh, come join us, there's beer and, uh, and bikes. But, but uh, jokes aside, I mean, check us out at runcentral.com. We, we offer a full stack solution, but one of the things which all of these guys mentioned, right, I mean, these use cases are still evolving. I mean, but, so the expectation needs to be managed that what works today is gonna work differently in six months from now. Uh, AI is changing. It, the way we ex do sentiment analysis, the way we go after these audiences, the way uh, you know you you drive employee productivity, which effectively drives customer mm -hmm. engagement, that in th those two worlds are converging, and so these use cases are are definitely what is making a con like a, a customer engagement better will also make employee pr productivity better. I mean, those mm -hmm. use cases are all converging, so watch out for those use cases and come talk to us about them. We are. Uh, we are looking at some really cool use cases. I, I guess across the board. <laughs> in, in this panel, so. Okay. Well, thank you. We need to wrap it up. We're uh, one minute over time. But thanks everyone for attending, and thank you to our panelists. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.